Hello everyone. My name is Mihir Thakkar and I welcome you all to our online class on introduction to machine learning. In our today's class, we are going to focus on reinforcement learning and specifically we are going to go over how to implement some reinforcement learning algorithms using open AI gem. Without any further ado, let me get into the session. We're going to do a quick recap. Uh, this is a second class on reinforcement learning. So we're going to quickly go over a few things that we have done in our previous classes. We are also briefly going to go over what we call Bellman's equations. And then finally, we're going to implement a value iteration algorithm in OpenAI Gem. We just don't want to talk theory. We also want to make sure that after every course at Code Heroku, you are left with uh, something that you could implement and you know, share it with the world. So this is what we have seen in our machine learning class until now. So the whole purpose of machine learning is you are given a set of inputs, let's say X, and you are also given a set of desired output. And your job as a machine learning engineer is to come up with this mapping function F, which maps all your inputs to outputs. But in many real world scenarios, the problem is not so obvious. Let's say you are given a robot over here in this room. And because the way the dynamics of the robots are set up, when you move ahead, only there are 80% of chance you will end up that you will move forward. There are 10% of chance that you might actually bang into the wall or another 10% of chance that you might come this way. Now, what happens if you try to do something like this in this situation? So you say that based on the sensor inputs that you get, you say that you want to go forward. Okay. You end up going forward. That's the action that you give your robot. But because the way we saw that there was some chance that you might actually bang in to the wall as well, you end up crashing into the wall. So my question to you guys is because the way dynamics of this robot were set up, let's say output of our machine learning function was okay, go forward. But because the real world is stochastic, all our actions don't always end up having intended consequences. What you do is you accidentally crash into the wall. So now should we learn from this situation that going forward in this state is not a good idea or is it sometimes just the case? So in this situation over here, 80% of chance is that you won't crash, right? So you shouldn't learn from this just one crash that going forward is not a good idea. So in many cases, what ends up happening is this setup over here that we have y is equal to fx is not sufficient. What you also need to do is once you get a mapping output, you also need to check your environment again and get a feedback signal. So for those who are familiar with control systems, this might be very familiar to you. What you do is you not only rely on the output of your system, but you also continuously check where am I ending up? So what you are doing over here is you are taking a sample from the environment again and feeding it back to your system. And what you take from your environment is the new state that you ended up in and the reward. In this case, the reward could be something like, have I crashed into the wall or not? So when we modify our learning problem to also take the sample from our environment and feed it back to our algorithm over here. This is the case of reinforcement learning. And one thing to note over here is this crash or this signal, whether we bang in to a wall or not, we are not going to always get it. So whenever robot is moving around this world over here, we are not necessarily always going to end up getting that signal, which is different than supervised machine learning, because in that case, you are always going to get some sort of desired output for your input. Then in the last class, we also went ahead and formalized our problem a little. We said that it is important to 
come up with the mathematical formulation as well so that we can eventually solve the problem that we have at hand so what we did is we said okay this is how our model of the world looks like we have an agent a machine learning agent which is trying to learn how to navigate this environment and we said that to solve it we're going to use something called as markov decision processes or mdps and this state transition diagram might be familiar to a lot of you guys as well the only thing that we are saying over here is there are different states there can be n number of states s0 s1 s2 in each state if you are in the state you get a reward so for staying in state 0 you get a reward r0 for being in state 1 you get r1 and so on and there are some probabilities associated with each state so the probability of going from this state to this state is given by probability of s1 given that you are in s0 and so on so nothing new nothing something that we haven't seen in our engineering classes or you know maybe if you have taken some basic math classes before the new thing over here was we said that we are interested in finding this policy and the goal of any reinforcement learning algorithm is to come up with this policy which maps all the states to an action so over here if i am in this state what is the next action should i take and that is what i am interested in so there could be an arrow from s0 to s2 as well so should i go from s1 should i go to s1 or should i go to s2 directly so if i am in state s0 what will be my determining factor to whether go in s1 or s2 i'm interested in getting more more rewards right let me make it a little bit more simpler let's say you're playing a game of chess and you know that if you make move 1 you are going to finish the game and your reward is going to be like minus 1000 if you do an action 2 you are still going to be in that game and you don't get any reward so depending on what will you choose that action or depending what state would you like to be in you are choosing a state eventually based on reward and to extend that idea a little we are not just interested in the next immediate reward we are interested in the sum of all future rewards let's say again we are playing the game of chess if you make a move one you don't get anything but if you make a move two you are guaranteed that in the third move after that you will lose the game so which one you will choose the first one or the second one the first one because you know that if you choose the second move eventually you are going to lose so you don't want to play that move right so not only just rewards we are interested in the sum of all future rewards and that's what we said in our last class is that the value of a state is given by sum of all future rewards so expected because these rewards are stochastic as well sometimes we get the reward and sometimes we don't and that's why there is an expectation and probabilities associated with the rewards as well so we are saying that the value associated with each policy over here or is given by sum of all future rewards and then we said that we'll discount it by a factor of gamma so that if we end up adding all our rewards together from zero to infinity we don't want to end up going out of memory or we don't want to end up going until infinity so we added a factor of gamma over here which is one that it makes our life much easier and it bounds that expectation and second you could also view it as we are valuing our current rewards more than our future rewards so our current rewards are more valuable than future rewards that's what we are saying so if i give you 100 rupees right now versus 100 rupees one year later you will value 100 rupees right now much more right and that's what we are saying over here saying that 
adding a factor of gamma which is between 0 and 1 so let's say you take gamma of 0 0.9 you are saying that my current reward is more valuable than if you give me a reward three steps ahead now we are also interested in something called as q function a q function is nothing but it it's a function which takes in a state a action and gives a real valued output so for example it could take in a state as 3 comma 2 and an action could be let's say we want the robot to go up now can we come up with a real value attached to this state action pair and that's what a q function does it takes in a state which state we are in it also takes in an action that we choose let's say we choose to go up the q function will give you a real value attached to this state action pair because remember over here when we are in state 0 we are interested in which state action pair to select right to go to the next state and so on so what we are trying to do is come up with a function which will take in the state so let's say this q function will take in the state 0 and then what we could do is try out different actions we can try out action 1 action 2 action 3 and it will give us the value associated with each function so that we can select which action to take right so it's almost like trying out this is an example of you know, what a q function might do so let's say it, uh, in physical implementation it could be just a dictionary which is associated with a value of 77 it could be a hash function which takes an input as 3 comma 2 comma up right and then gives you an output as 77 so we don't know what this function is right now this is just an example which which i'm trying to say that what a q function does is it takes in any state now the state need not be a tuple necessarily okay a state could be an integer or depending upon the problem that you select and this action could be again this is just an example for our robot there are four actions which could be up left down and you know, east west north and west okay so depending upon the state action pair it takes in the state action pair and gives you a real value and what we could do is because it's a real value we can evaluate all our q values and then select an action which is best for us right so otherwise right now we don't have a way to evaluate these states and actions so let me go back over here and so let's say we are in this grid world over here and in this grid world there are two states there are two absorbing states this if we reach this state over here we get plus 100 again this is the same example of our robot going around in this room so if we reach this state we get the reward of plus 100 if we reach this state we get a reward of minus 100 which is not so good for us right we don't want to end up over here we have a reward of minus 3 which is scattered all around this room so even if you are just sitting in this spot over here you will get minus 3 points which is not good for your robot so what we are trying to do is we are trying to finish our game as soon as possible or we want this robot to go to this plus 100 as quickly as possible because if it keeps on roaming it will get minus 3s minus 3s so given this reward table over here now we are interested in finding what will be value of this state over here initially we, maybe we can start off with the same values as you know, the rewards but if you ask yourself is the value of this state just think intuitively don't think a lot in terms of machine learning or reinforcement learning so can someone tell me this state over here is a3 a better state to be in or c1 so everyone seems to agree that a3 is a better position to be in and 
one answer that I'm seeing over there is saying that if I take only one step, I'll get to my plus 100. And that's why it's a better position to be in. So the intuition is correct over there. All you care is if you are over here, there is a possibility that you can go towards the right and finish the game. And that's why you are going to use a max over all the actions. You want to assign a value which is will have the maximum of all actions that you could get. And in this case, what you see is the value associated with this state will be given by minus three because I got over here. So the reward that I collect right now is minus three. Plus, if I take an action towards the right over here, I'm sure that I'll get plus 100. And that's why the value associated with this state, a better approximation is 97. So I have a quiz for you over here. Now this is the same scenario as before. So this time what we have changed over here is the mechanics of the world. Before when we did this problem, there was 100% chance that if you take that action, you go in that direction. Now what we are saying is, there is only 80% chance that you will go towards plus 100. So what is a better approximation of the value for the state over here, which is A3 and going towards East. Instead of 100% chance of ending up over here, what you could do is you could say 0.8 times 100 and minus three, which will give you 77. Okay. So, this minus three was over here in the first equation that I wrote, but it's, it's the same thing. So I'm getting my current reward of minus three and plus I'm adding hundred because I can go over here with 80% of chance, which is giving me 77. So 77 will be a better estimate of value associated with cell A3. All right. So let's do one more. So let's say we update our value table now. Now this is 77. Again, we are plus 100 and minus 100. What is the estimate value of Q B3 North? So what is a better Q function Q value for being in this state and going towards North? And again, the world is stochastic and there is only 80% chance that you end up going forward. All right, so let's see what it should be. With 80% of chance, you could go north. So you'll get 77. There is 0.1 chance that you will end up in this minus 100 pit. So you need to account for that. And another 10% of chance that you will bang into this wall and again, you will stay at the same place then. So you get a zero over there because the current estimate at this point is still zero. And minus our current minus three, which will give you 48.6. Now let's say if you have these values over here, these numbers are giving you an indication of how good is it to be in that state. So this number is saying that this state is much better than this state over here, right? And this state is, seems like it's not so good because one that it is so close to this minus 100. And also, you know, if you come from this, you will have to take a long distance or maybe go this way to reach plus 100. So just an example, but let's say someone gave you this value function. Can you extract a policy out of it? And what's a policy? A policy is on every state over here. I want you guys to mark. Will you go up, left, right or down? So that will be a policy associated with each state over here. Let's start from over here. Let's start with this bottom cell. Should you go up or right? Either one is okay. So over here, let's say you choose to end up going up and again, what we are saying is doesn't matter whether you come over here or over here, both of these have equal values. So you came over here. There is only one option. Should you go down or should you go up? 
up right so you come over here now again you ask yourself should you go right or should you come down and you see that you should go right because this is a better state to be in then you ask yourself again should i go back over here or should i come over here you say this is a better place to be in so you come over here and you ask yourself again which is a better place to be in and eventually you get to the plus 100 or you start from over here and eventually you will you'll make take this path over here you'll reach to plus 100 so once you have those values associated with each cell or each state over there it becomes very easy to find out what policy should you follow is everyone with me on this one all right so the thing that we are doing in our head there is also a mathematical formulation to it the q value associated with each state and action we are determining it based on the immediate reward plus expected future rewards right we are assigning that values based on the immediate reward which was let's say minus three i collected minus three at that state and then what is an expected future reward right so we said r of sa plus expected future rewards and this future rewards are the values associated with the next state or no the next policy that we will we would choose over there but at that point in that state we don't really know what what that is so to get this expectation out what i'm doing is multiplying with the probabilities of reaching to that state so what am i saying is i, I took this gamma out of that summation over there and i'm saying the sum summation of all probabilities associated with going to state s prime given that you are in state s and you take an action a and you multiply with the values of all your future states and what you want to do is you want to select an action which is giving you maximum value over here so which will give you a maximum value to this expression over here so you're doing a max of a over this so i just took the max of a over this and that's what i'm saying is value associated with each state and this is what you call bellman's equation or bellman's equality now if you would keep on iterating this you can prove that this will converge and this assignment will become a equality so v of s will be equal to this expression over here and it looks complicated but it's the same thing that we are doing we have done in our previous examples we are saying that we'll take the current reward of that state and then we'll choose an action which will give us maximum value based on probability of going into that state multiplied by value of that state does that make sense it's the same thing that we did instead of deriving this equation before and then doing it doing an example what i did was i did an example over here so that it, you guys get an intuition on where is this coming from current reward plus the probabilities time the value of next state that's what we are saying over here current reward plus and we are discounting our future rewards by factor of gamma just like we did before all right so let's get into the hands on part of our today's class i think we have seen enough theory that we can implement our value iteration agent in open ai gym so what i want you guys to do is let me share this link with you this will have our starter code for today please go ahead and download this and extract it in a place where you would like to work on and reach to this point where you have this folder downloaded and extracted i also want to make sure that all of you have open ai gym installed on your computers if you haven't already did done so make sure you uh, use the pip package manager and say pip install gym to install open ai gym on your machines so make sure you extract your files and what you see over here is we have two starter files in the play.py file we are gonna create our own environment we're gonna instantiate our environment and our agent we are gonna use open ai gym 
and in the agents.py file we are going to create our value iteration agent which will be able to compute the values associated with each state just like we did for our robot example and you also have the completed code in case you get stuck somewhere or you want to refer to it some after our class you can have a look at the completed code over there as well all right so let's do a quick tutorial on open ai gem i won't spend a lot lot of time on it let's create a new file over here from scratch so i'm going to say open ai not py file and let me open it with sublime over here so i created a new file called openai.py and i'm opening it with sublime so let's go ahead and start using open ai so one of the challenges for reinforcement learning which we saw in our last class is you need access to environment and not just the data set if you're doing supervised machine learning what would happen is you now you can get these data sets and you can it is essentially easy to benchmark your algorithms so you can compare your algorithms easily but with reinforcement learning you need access to environments so if i have a robot in my lab and i'm testing my algorithm on it how do i know how is it going to perform on some other robot in in a lab which is you know in maybe in us so there isn't a good way to benchmark our algorithms if you don't have standardized data sets in supervised machine learning case so similarly in reinforcement learning there is a problem with environments and what open ai does is tries to give researchers and you no know, practitioners a standard set of environments where you can test your algorithms with so that's why it's so powerful and popular these days is instead of creating your own environments you could use the environments created from open ai which have pretty much standard apis for different environments and then you can use those apis and those environments to evaluate your machine learning reinforcement learning algorithms does that make sense let's try out a basic open ai gym like beginner 101 code over here so i'm going to say import gym make sure you can import open ai gym and run this and if you get an import error there is something wrong you need to say pip install gym and make sure that you have open ai installed on your computer so say import gym so what i mean by that is run this line over here and make sure you are not getting an import error else there is something wrong over there so i'm not getting that error so open ai is installed correctly on my computer the next thing that we are going to do is say environment is gym dot make and let's create a basic cart pole environment which is again a popular reinforcement learning challenge which we might solve going ahead in the class and then what you could say is say environment dot reset which will reset all the observations and will start your environment from zero or the initial state then what you could do is or let's say episode in range so i want to try this out 1000 times i want to say environment dot render so what you could do is then say environment dot step essentially what we are saying over here is saying that render the environment show me the screen and then say perform this action so what action to perform let me tell you that this cart pole balancing world has only two action either you can move the cart pole a little slightly on the left or slightly on the right okay so let's say environment dot step let's say zero over here and see what happens i don't know if it's going to work but let's see what there are only two actions i know that so i'm going to say environment dot step dot zero save it run this oops something happened but 
not so, what we expected over there right so th- you saw a cart pull over there because we were giving it the same action every time we are going to say 0 0 0 every time it ended up we we fell down right and let's not say 1000 episodes because it's taking too much of time but let's say maybe we can do it for 100 episodes 100 times then let's say if i give one then am i going to a different direction right now we are definitely not good at it and we haven't written any algorithm to balance that cart pull over there and today we are not going to do that the only thing that i wanted to make sure is you know show you how open ai gem functions at a very basic level today the problem that we going to solve is call as frozen lake or let me go over that problem as well so that you guys know what i am talking about so the problem that we are going to solve today is called as frozen lake so here's the description of that problem the agent controls the movement of a character in a grid world some tiles of this grid world are walkable and the others lead to the agent falling in the water and our goal is to reach from the starting state to the goal state okay so this is how the grid is set up over here there is this starting point just like imagine that you know we are doing the same problem as our robot and the robot is starting at this location over here our goal is to reach to this location which is at the bottom right hand corner over here and there are some states over here which are holes which is you know, if you go to this holes you you end up falling in them and your game is over then if the state is f which means the land is frozen over there and it is safe to walk on those states okay that's what we are saying and what we are going to do today is write a value iteration agent such that it can go from the start state to the goal state find its way avoiding these holes the only complication over here is that our actions are not deterministic if we try to go down we still might end up going towards the right we might still fall in so think of it it is a windy world or you no know, it's a slippery world you're trying to go north but because there is this world is slippery you might end up going to the other direction all right so again the cart pull problem that i showed losing that balance let's come over here let's close this open ai.py file Let's see what do we have as instruction for step one over here. So same thing like we did before. We have some agents which are imported from this agents dot py file, and our job is to write this agents right now. We need to complete this file. It's you now there are some to dos over here for us, but what I have given you is a skeleton code to start off with. so the first thing that is asked is we need to instantiate a random or a value iteration agent so let's start off with a random agent okay so let me say agent is equal to random agent and what should i give over here can you look at the random agent dot py file so here is the random agent class what does it need for it self to instantiate or what does it need over here so not a random action right so that's the next part which is choosing an action but to instantiate the object itself there is this init class init method over here which takes in action space right so this action space will come from environment so what you could do is to instantiate this random agent what we need to tell it is what kind of actions that you can take so if you are instantiating a robot it should know what kind of actions that it can take whether it can go left right north south agent is random agent and i am going to say environment dot action underscore space okay so now our agent a random agent is instantiated 
the next thing that we need to do is let's come over here so let's skip the second step over here for now let's come to the step 3 we'll play the frozen lake 100 or uh, maybe 1000 times with this policy and measure the reward so let's come over here and write that part what i need to do is keep a track of all rewards so i'm going to say all rewards i'm going to create a list over here for me so that i can keep a track of all the rewards then let's say for episode in range 1000 because we want to play this 1000 times i'm going to say observation is environment dot reset the same thing that we did before we are going to say reset the environment now total reward in this episode is zero let's start off with zero now let's step in the frozen lake environment as long as we don't reach it reach to the goal or either so until we reach our goal state or until we fall into our hole so i'm going to say while true so we, i'm going to play this until i fall or i win action is equal to agent dot for a random agent which method will i use over here to choose an action now it's pretty obvious over there we haven't completed that part but there is only one method in the random agent over there what is the name of that method that you need to use to choose an action yep choose underscore action right so let's say agent dot choose underscore action to choose an action what do i need to have yep observation right so an agent will choose an action based on the environment that it looks or know how the environment looks around so that's how we will choose our action based on our observations so this is where our observation is coming from all right so the next thing that we are going to do is now that we know what action to take what we could do is say environment dot step I'm going to give this action over there and when you do this environment dot step action so can you go to the open ai documentation and find out what is the return value from this method which is environment dot step yep the new observation reward done and the info right so once you take a step what it is going to do is it will give us a new observation so how is the environment changed before because of you taking this action then it will also give you reward because your actions might give you some rewards and then you also get done whether your game is finished now the only time the done will be true when if you have finished your game and info we don't use it right now we don't need to but let's keep it over there okay so that's what we are going to do if done we need to stop stepping in the world and let's also say all rewards dot append reward right so what i'm saying is take this reward and store it in my all rewards list so that i can see what has happened in the end okay so save this part over here the next thing that i want to do is we haven't completed the choose action part for our random agent over here so this choose action is still we need to it says to do over here so the next task for you is can you look up on OpenAI Gym documentation and search how will you take a random action based on the observation space that you have? So what we can say is self dot action space dot sample, right? So if everything is right, 
we should be able to get a random action out of this okay let's see if this works let's come over here and let's also print out the average rewards over here so i'm going to say print average reward and i'm going to say numpy dot mean all rewards so this will give me the mean of all rewards let's see if this works actually it completed without any errors to my surprise but we got only an average reward of 0 0.001 so most of the times we are failing over here sometimes by fluke i think we are getting some rewards but most of the times we are failing and our average reward is very close to zero so you get a reward if you complete your task you get a reward of one if you fall in a hole you get a reward of zero so most of the times we are getting a reward of zero and so our average reward is something 0 0.017 so can we do a better job can we estimate the values of associated with this environment and can we find a policy out of that so that's what our task is going to be and guys your average reward might vary a little because the environment itself is stochastic and the actions you take are random so there is no guarantee that you will get the same average reward but it will be close to zero All right so now let's comment out the random agent and let's create a value iteration agent which will do a much better job at navigating through this world so let's say agent is equal to value iter agent which we have instantiated we we haven't completed it but we have a skeleton over there and can someone tell me what are the two things that value iteration agent takes to instantiate itself So right over here to instantiate value iteration agent what are the two things that it needs yep environment and the gamma right so let's come over here let's give our value iteration agent access to the environment and the gamma that we chose so right now we are just working with a discount factor of one and we can change the discount factor and see how it affects our performance all right so we our agent is instantiated now the next thing that we could do is we need to do is actually perform the value iteration right so we haven't written a method over here which will perform the value iteration for us so let's come over here let's go to the agents.py file over here so after this helper function over here which is going to help us extract the policy first thing that we need to do is write a function that will perform the value iteration so i'm going to say define value iteration and it will take itself so before i go and write this thing in in code over here what i want you to do what i want to do is just show you the algorithm and we have already done it several times in the practice example that we did let me just show you how it looks when you write it on code this is how the value iteration algorithm works we are going to start with the values of zeros for all our states we are going to create this list of one by n number of states so if we have eight states we'll do it we'll have a length of this list as eight right can someone tell me how many states do we have in our frozen lake environment so how many states do we have over there so it's right over here so this is the grid how many states do you see it is 4 cross 4 grid right so it, there are 16 states so these s f h and g are actually the type of states okay 
this is a starting state this is a frozen state this is a hole right that's a type of a state but in total there are 16 states does that make sense so we have 16 states over here that's where we'll start with for every state we are going to evaluate all our actions so we are going to go over all our actions and we'll calculate this value associated with this state action pair okay and we know we have done this before we we know that this assignment is the reward that you get in the current state plus the discount factor summation of all probabilities times the value of all future states right what you're going to do is calculate qsas for all actions and then over here you're going to select a action which gave you maximum value so you're going to say maximum of qsa over here and you're going to say that the value associated with the state s is this does that make sense so this is what we are going to write in code as well so this is the pseudo code or you know, a whiteboard implementation of our algorithm all right so let's implement this in python let's go back to our sublime text window we are done with the play.py file we just need to write this value iteration algorithm we're going to continue this until we reach to a good state right or what you could do is have a maximum number of iterations for the value algorithm so over here i'm saying that i'm initializing maximum iterations as 1000 because remember in one pass you will get one estimate so you need to do value iteration value iteration is a recursive and iterative it is a iterative algorithm right so what you could say is for i in range self dot max iterations so perform value iterations these many times so we are going to perform value iterations for 1000 times so that's one way of doing it or you could perform keep performing value iteration unless your changes in values are not big enough just like you do gradient descent so the next thing that we could do is first we'll store our previous values that we have created so that we don't lose them i'm going to say np.copy self.values so before updating the values i want to store the previous values because we are going to use those previous values in the next iteration then I'm going to say for state in range self dot num states. I'm going to create a Q value array or a list of Q values. I'm going to say for action, just like what we are doing before, I'm just implementing that in Python now for action in range self dot so just like i have num states over here what attribute stores the num total number of actions which are possible yep self dot num actions right just like you have self dot num states we have self dot num actions to go over all actions that are possible So I'm going to say for action in self dot num actions, we are going to keep a track of all the next state rewards, right? So next state rewards, because based on the next state rewards, we are going to select the queue. So based on this next state reward, what you need to say is, now we are going to do the summation of all the transition probabilities. So the next loop that we are going to write is for this guy. We were over here. We wrote for state in all states, for actions in all actions. Now we initialize the queue as well. 
the next thing that we are going to do is write another for loop for this guy over here so we need to evaluate the probabilities of each state action pair right so we are going to write a for loop to go over all probabilities of each state action pair so let me go ahead and do that so i'm going to say for transition probability comma next state comma reward probability in self dot state probabilities of this state comma action next state rewards dot append I'm going to say probability of going into the next state times we're going to say reward probability plus and again where are we getting this from we are getting this from the equation that we just saw which was transition probability times reward probability plus gamma times previous v of next state so what we are saying over here is the next state rewards we are going to go over the transition probabilities of this environment and we are going to get the rewards associated with all the states and we're going to say go over the next state look at what the transition probability of that state is multiply with the reward probability and multiply that add up with the discount factor times the previous value that you know we have stored over here right of the next state so that's what we are trying to do next thing that i want to do is say q value not append i'm going to say sum all the next state rewards right so we want to select an action which has the best possible summation of all the next state rewards so this is what the q value of that state is now once you are done with this come outside of this loop over here and over here what you could say is self dot values of state of this state is equal to max of q value so take the maximum of q value and assign it to this state over here okay so seems like you no know, once you are done with the value iteration what we will have in self dot values is we'll have the max q values of you no know, that possible state so in this self dot values we'll have the list of all possible maximum q values of that state and we also are given a helper function over here which can which is again similar to what we have seen so i'm not going to go over in detail over this one but what it does is it takes self dot values and creates a policy out of it okay so let's run both of these things in our play.py file so what i'm going to do over here is come over here let me go over here and i'm going to say agent dot value iteration right and it doesn't need anything else and i'm also going to say agent dot extract policy so what extract policy does is after the value iteration is complete it will create a policy out of the values that we have done you have done it yourself 
when you were given a table or table of all the values you knew you know how easy was it to get the policy out of it right all right so let's see if it works we haven't defined our choose action yet but let me do this let's come over here and say print agent dot policy so i'm going to say so we are not going to be able to complete this loop over here because we haven't done the agent dot choose action for the value iteration agent but what i want to do is see if we are able to complete the reach to this point at least right so now let's see if this works so yeah we got an error like we expected but we got the policy over here which we expected now what this policy is telling you is you now if you look up the documentation of the open ai gem there are four actions right you could either go up left right bottom in that grid world so the zero is corresponding to left or maybe the three is corresponding to maybe down i'm not sure of these exact but what it is saying is go left go right 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 go left again go left 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 that's what our policy is saying so for each state we have now a action that we should take okay now by looking at this list over here what should we write in this agent dot choose action method over here so this choose action takes an observation so this observation is number on no which state i am so this observation is let's say 3 okay now if i am in state 3 0 1 2 and 3 right i am in this state so what is the action that i should take and i am highlighting that action for you it is action number 3 right that's what our policy is saying the, the way you read this policy is you are saying that in state 0 do action 0 in state 1 do action 3 in state 2 do action 3 and so on now what i'm saying is if i'm getting state as 3 state or observation i'm using those words interchangeably if my state is 3 what is the action that i should take yeah action 3 right so that's what we are going to do so the return value over here should be what you need to do is say index into the policy list that you have so i'm going to just say self dot policy of observation right so if i get observation as 3 i'll go over here onto the third spot and get this value out if my observation is let's say 16 0 1 2 3 4 and so on the last one what what will be the return value of my choose action yep the last one zero right this guy so now that we have completed our value iteration agent now let's run this and see what do we get and we get much better result right instead of getting a number which was close to 0 now we are getting an average reward of 751 which is saying that out of 1000 times 751 times we were able to reach our goal which is definitely much better than just wandering around randomly in the environment all right guys so that's it for our class on value iteration with open ai gem for today i hope you guys had a good time thanks again for coming